Last video we talked about uh, how Ole Bergen of Norway saved the world by inventing the external frame backpack. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, the American version uh, made by a guy named Lloyd Nelson. Now uh, his his invention was called the Trapper Nelson Indian Pack Board, or simply the Trapper Nelson Pack, also known as the Alaskan. Pack board. Now, you you may have you may have seen one before, like that one back there, that has been in every video I've done since I began this series. This is a Trapper Nelson Indian pack board. Now, I am not going to get into the details of construction of this. If if you want to, there are about a dozen videos on the Trapper Nelson pack on YouTube. Uh, the best series I have found is on Dave Chantberry's YouTube site where he shows how to build one, how to make a reproduction of a Trapper Nelson pack. And you can get all the construction details and the sizes there. I do recommend it. He made it about six years ago. But it's it holds up well. Now, uh, without going into detail on the construction details the way Dave Canterbury did, I do want to highlight a few features of the pack. Let's take a look. Okay, now in general, the design is two side pieces, two side rails, and then three laterals, one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle, to hold the frame together. But the one thing I want to show you is this. This is going to become important later on in the 20th century. It's this right here. I don't know if you can see that. We'll get a little close-up of it here in a second. This is a piece of wire with a loop on the end. It goes through eye bolts, and the eye bolts go through grommets on the side of the pack. You can then remove the pack bag from the pack board. This is the feature that the Forest Service found uh, most attractive. And it goes along with some of the other designs of the 19th and early 20th century that we've seen where modularity field expedient modification, if you will, uh, of the pack. This pack does two things. It can carry loads that will fit in a bag, like sleeping bags, blankets, food, etc. And, and you can see uh, it has a very large cargo capacity. But it can also, the bag can be removed and, and uh, tools such as saws, axes, and other implements that would be useful in the uh, in the field, in the in the woods, making fire breaks, creating camping spots and trails, that kind of thing, that can be strapped strapped to the body of the pack. The design is one. What happened was is that Lloyd Nelson worked for a company that sent him to uh, Alaska. Uh, they were experiencing some shortages in a warehouse and, and he went up there and solved the problem and, and then he asked for an unpaid leave of absence so that he could uh, go out and stake a claim and become rich in the gold fields. Now this was about 1919, 1920. So the Yukon Gold Rush was still in people's minds, even though it had happened about 20 years earlier. And people were still seeking their fortune. Now, what Lloyd did was is he borrowed a pack made by the local uh, Inuit Indians. Uh, because there still weren't 
very little roads, and the only way you could get anywhere uh, to stake a claim was to strap something on your back. Now, this is a contraption made out of woods and sinew and wore it on your shoulders. It was a true external frame backpack, but uh, Nelson found it wasn't comfortable. And when he got back to Washington State, uh, he decided he wanted to design a pack that would not only carry about a 40 to 50 pound load, but also be more comfortable to wear. Now to give you an idea of just how single-minded Nelson was, is he went out and bought materials, wood and canvas, uh, to uh, make his first version of his pack. Uh, he made nine of them, stepped back and looked at them, didn't like what he saw, so he set in fire. Burned them all. Nothing but ashes. There is no example of Trapper Nelson's first pack. He made the second pack, made about a dozen of them, went walking around different stores there in uh, Seattle. Nobody was real interested in buying them. Backpacking wasn't a thing back then. Uh, he left a few packs on consignment. Some of them sold. Enough of them to make him decide, well, he would make some, manufacture them. And he went into business with a fellow named Traeger. Uh, and he patented, he applied for his patent in 1922, and it was granted in 1924. Now, if you take a look at the patent, you can see exactly the audience he was shooting for. As was said, uh, Nelson was very intentional on his design. He, he had found uh, a, a pack system up there in Alaska made by the Inuits that could carry a 40 to 50 pound load. Could carry, you, know, you could carry all, everything you needed for a week or two on, on your back, uh, but it wasn't comfortable. So he concentrated first on comfort. His biggest, there's an advertising flyer for the uh, very first uh, packs uh, out of uh, Linville University that I can't show here because of copyright issues, but I will put a link in it uh, down, in the, uh, down in the comments so that you can see this flyer. In, in two places in the flyer, he talks about uh, airflow. The pack separates the load from the back by about an inch. There's, there's an inch worth of air that can come up through. Now this reduces chafing first off because per perspiration and rubbing will cause chafing and in severe cases blistering. Uh, but this airflow also keeps you cool. Uh, Nelson being from the Pacific Northwest, this is pretty much uh, to be expected. If it's a high humidity area, you need a lot of airflow to get rid of your perspiration. But another feature of his pack is the flap. If you look, the flap is actually bigger than it needs to be to close the pack. That's because it is designed you put a rolled, your, your rolled sleeping gear up underneath and the flap on the pack here keeps your sleeping bag uh, or your bedroll from the weather. Now, we're going to see in our, in our next uh, few, few videos uh, when we revisit sleeping bags post-1930 uh, how the Trapper Nelson pack affected sleeping bag design uh, for most of the 20th century. A note I'm going to talk about uh, to you designers out there. When we talked about the Bergen pack, Ole Bergen uh, went into business and uh, after a couple years he was unhappy with the sales. The sales weren't going through the roof. So he sold his patent to another fellow who, uh, with a little bit of marketing knowledge, uh, managed to make 
millions of dollars and established a PAC that is uh, the, the PAC of the 20th century, uh, in Europe at least. Trapper Nelson, Lloyd Nelson, he went into business with this Traeger fella and after a couple of years he was disappointed with the sales uh, and uh, sold his patent to Traeger. Two weeks later, two weeks after the ink was dry on that contract, a district in the United States Forest Service got in contact with Traeger and ordered 500 Trapper Nelson pack boards. They liked the idea that they could put a bag on it or strap tools to it. Two weeks later, another district ordered another 500 Trapper Nelson packs. So essentially, a, a month after he gave up his design, a thousand packs were sold. Back in those days, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of stuff. So if, if you are a designer, but you find yourself unable to manufacture, get together with somebody who believes in your product as much as you do. Uh, share the profits with him no matter how big or how small, but don't let go of your idea. Somebody takes your idea, makes a kajillion dollars, and he gets to keep it because you signed over your rights to your patent. Don't do that. Now, whether or not the Trapper Nelson pack created the American backpacking industry and the hobby itself, or the hobby uh, created uh, the marketability of the Trapper Nelson pack. That's, that's kind of a chicken and egg situation. When Trapper Nelson uh, invented his pack, uh, recreational backpacking was not a thing. It was not popular. He made that pack as a, as a, uh, a, a tool as, uh, for work, for, for going out and, and finding your fortune in the Yukon, or to go trapping and hunting. Back in the early part of the 20th century, a man could feed his family by trapping uh, various animals and, and hunting game and selling the meat or feeding his family. But there can be no doubt that this design, the Trapper Nelson design, established the form and function of all recreational, long-distance, load-carrying equipment for the first two-thirds of the 20th century. He established the form and function not only of the pack, but as we'll see in a future video, he also affected sleeping bag design by putting that little flap on the top of his pack. Okay, well there you go with the Trapper Nelson pack. Uh, the Nelson pack is probably, in my opinion, the, the even a bit more important, at least to American backpackers, than the uh, Bergen Pack was. Our next video is going to be on probably the, the most ubiquitous pack uh, of the 20th century, and it will be the one that we'll use to finish out our 1920s and 1930s backpacks. And from there, we're going to go on to uh, another shot at sleeping bags. Uh, I know, got a lot of sleeping bags, but that's where most of the development in the first third of the 20th century was in, in uh, camping equipment, was in design of sleeping bags. We've seen about eight days. Bye.